Throughout this series on Neolithic textile processing tools, we've looked at quite a variety of things, from the thorn brushes, which are from a very early point in the Neolithic. But there is flax around, but people are mostly still working with tree basts and other plant fibres. And we demonstrated that these are not only very easy to make, they're also very, very good at turning things like lime bast into fine, even ribbons. And it turned out to be extremely good on nettle as well. These even fine strips now are perfect for splicing. Splicing, of course, is the precursor to spinning with a spindle. Quite a lot of you were taken with the idea of these and have found ways of adapting them for modern textile crafts. So it's really fantastic to see a tool that's so old finding a modern application today. Next, we looked at bone points. So some of them are simple, very, very multi-purpose tools that have got a definite association with bark working, but there are so many textile processes you could use a bone point from, for beat, from beating, uh, weaving, to um, scoring things, um, separating, lots of uses for a bone pokey stick. The multi-bladed version has several different applications. They worked quite well to remove the seed heads from flax, but they were also particularly well suited for use as a basic hackle, combing out flax fibres to remove the toe and prepare them for fine work. We've got one more tool to go in this series. It's time to have a really good look at thorn hackles. With all of these projects, research is a really important thing. So I've brought myself down to the British Library for a couple of days working in their reading rooms. Now, I'm not allowed to film when I'm in there, but trust me, they've got some really, really nice books. One of the things that's fascinating in this sort of research is finding out where images and information first shows up. So this is a page from a very influential book on Neolithic textiles that came out in the 30s and it's got a really nice image both of the surviving section of the thorn comb that we're working on today but also a reconstruction that now lives in the Swiss National Museum. A lot of you will be familiar with Elizabeth Barber's excellent book on prehistoric textiles. Her drawing is redrawn from this earlier image. That's perfectly normal academic practice, but it's quite fascinating seeing where these things turn up. And there's others out there that give us other information. So this is from another book that I saw in the library. These are later, these are Iron Age, and each one of these is two sides of the same object. But that's one, two, three, four, and there's another one on the same book. These are similar thorn hackling boards or carding boards from Iron Age sites. This is a style of tool that once it's in use, it keeps being used for a very long time. Now my version starts with a plank of ash. Thank you very much, Hugh Milton, for providing that. This is a beautiful piece of English grown ash. It's not quite an inch thick. And onto this, I will trace out the shape of my carder and then I'm going to cut it out. I'm not using uh, prehistoric tools for this. I'm going to use a saw to cut out the outside and then we'll go over to chisels. Starting to shape the thorn flax comb, I am not a great woodworker. I'm also not trying to use the tools that were in use at the time. They had chisels, but their chisels were made out of flint and bronze in the later period. I'm using a shallow modern one and a rawhide mallet. That is at least possible for the time. I'm sure there are a lot of woodworkers out there that could give me tips on a better technique. I am just working on taking away the excess material a little bit at a time until I get the sort of shape that we found in the reference pictures from the museum. This is going to take me a while. I can't do too much of it in one go because I end up with really, really sore hands. Well, 
a fair bit of work later, I have definitely reached the bit where the professional woodworkers on my list should go and have a quiet lie down in a dark room and try not to look at the mess I'm making of this. But, um, you know what? It's starting to get there. There's a fair bit still to do. It is going to get better, I promise. But it's starting to get the profile that I need. I think I'm going to round the handle next. Yes, let's do that. Well, it's as carved as it's going to get. It's had a sanding. I did use modern sandpaper for this stage. And because I'm not trying to absolutely replicate the original methods, I am going to use a pillar drill to drill all the holes. I've taken the placement of the holes from the artist's impression of the reconstructed original. So they're not quite regular, but they're almost in rows. Uh, as soon as I've done that, I think we'll oil it and, uh, yeah, getting there. And here it is all sanded with all the holes in. Lots and lots and lots of holes. They're not perfect. A couple of them went a bit wonky, but you know what? The originals were probably bored with a flint, so I'm not going to worry about that too much. Let's get some oil on it. Linseed, I think, should dry nice and solid. Secret ingredient in this project is thorns lots and lots of black thorns i haven't got enough so i'm going to nip out and see what the hedges can offer me given that it's now june there is a problem with running out of spikes halfway through a project when it is nearly midsummer remember those lovely long thorns i was harvesting in the winter well at this time of year they're just new growth and they're bendy and most of these shoots don't have thorns at all. I have to really, really look to find some. Oh, look, there's a, there's one of last year's. So we'll have that. Hopefully I can find some more. There's a little bit of debate about what species are actually being used on these tools, but look here, this is hawthorn. The blossoms have just gone over. But even at this time of year, look how good those spikes are. I think I'm going to pad out my blackthorn spikes with hawthorn. And actually, it's entirely possible that some of the ones I picked back in the winter are hawthorn, particularly those really big, long, strong ones. Those, I think, are going to save the day, and there's quite a lot of them. Great. Well, it's time to start trying to put some thorns in. I'm pretty sure I haven't got enough. These are the ones collected in the winter. These are a few from this morning. A lot of those I think are too big. Let's see what happens when we start putting them together. Now, I'm not totally sure how this is going to go together. The ideal is to put three thorns into each space. So there's one big one, slightly shorter one, and let's have a nice, a nice skinny one. So I think it's a case of getting them lined up Pop them into a hole, wiggle them into place, and probably hit it with a rock. Oh, I like that. So there are, oh, I've lost count. I think there's 93 holes in there, and there are three thorns per hole. I'm going to try and do every other one, and that way, if I've run out really badly, this will still work for experimental purposes and I can add to them as the season goes on. But uh, right, let's do another one and find out. So, fairly big one, middling one, little thorn. Uh, let's try this hole next. Wiggle them into place. Give them a tap. They're going to be different heights. I don't think that's going to be a major problem. If it is, there's no glue on these. I can always take some out and put them in again. All right. I shall get on with it. I think I'll turn this off for a minute and uh, come back in a little bit. There's a few more of them done. You can see what it's going to look like. It's quite vicious, isn't it? Pressure fitting is fine. If one turns out to be loose, you just shove another thorn in. I definitely haven't got enough thorns. Let's see how far we get, though. I like that. That's uh, that's quite scary. 
Right, for the moment, that's me out of thorns. I'm really impressed with the pressure fitting element of this. Every time I had a loose one, you just add another thorn, tap it in. You could trim off some of the longer ones from the back to even out the height. I suspect when I start trying this, I'm going to need to adjust some of these very, very long thorns. There's a lot of holes still to fill. I'm hoping over the next few days to get enough thorns to fill it completely. If not, I'll still be able to try it. But for now, time for a cup of tea. Out early tomorrow for a spot of hedge bothering. And we'll see what this is like when we try it out. It's 6am and I've come down to the lake to look for more thorns. And I have struck jackpot. I was really struggling in the hedges yesterday, but... Look at this beautiful blackthorn. The slows are starting to ripen, but look at those lovely, lovely lethal thorns along the edges. These are exactly what I need, and I'm so glad I found them. I totally forgot a carrying basket, of course, so filling your pockets with thorns at dawn is, yeah, very much normal in my world. I'll uh, just get on with it, shall I? I had the first chance to try this out at the Neolithic Open Day at Bryn Cadlithi on Anglesey and people really enjoyed having a play with it. But it is time to test it properly. Now I've turned the camera portrait just so I can show you the length of this. This is a bundle, this is a kilo in fact, of scutched flax that's just turned up for me to experiment with. So I haven't processed this from scratch myself, somebody else has retted it has broken the outer twiggy parts off and has beaten it with a flat blade to get the worst of the woody parts off. It's not finished though. Pop that down there. This is still full of snarls. There are little bits of vegetable matter still in it. It still needs working over to remove the toe and put it into good order, ready for fine spinning. This is what we think these combs are used for. When I was making this, I was working with the thorns I had available and they are not perfectly level. I don't think that's gonna be a massive issue at this point, but I do suspect that in the long run, having them all the same height, probably these slightly shorter ones, might be a better idea, but that's okay. We're going to try it and see what happens. This bundle is a comfortable handful. I'm just going to hold it quite near to the end. I'm going to hold this flat for the moment and I'm just going to start very, very gently combing away at it. Oh, snagged a bit from further back already. I think these thorns are going to be fairly tough, but I really don't want to overstress them. Hey, but so far, so far, so good. That's smoothing out very, very nicely. The little snarly bits, the toe, are staying behind and are proven to be quite easily removed. That's great. Okay. Try and give you a different angle on this now. Let's turn this sideways and see if we can see what's going on. I'm moving my hand down the bundle just a little way. I would imagine in actual day-to-day -day use that sitting with this on your lap is probably going to be the most practical and natural feeling way of doing it. One of the things I was interested to see with these is how quickly thorns drop out. There is a site known where there's a bundle of spare thorns that aren't actually attached to one of these, but it's thought that they were intended as backups. Because if you remember, these are only in by pressure fitting. If a thorn drops out, it shouldn't actually be very difficult at all just to pop another one in. Well, I haven't stabbed myself yet either. Right, I'm going to keep.
going and finish this bundle because I need to do that for my own experimental purposes. But I'm going to stop the video here for the moment because I think you can probably see quite clearly this works. This works very, very nicely indeed. As time goes on, we know that this type of comb continues in use. There are at least five Iron Age examples I know of. And by that point, wool would be equally likely. At this point, though, in the Neolithic, woolly sheep aren't yet developed in the way that we understand them today. So it is really all about the plant fibres. Flax is absolutely critical as a crop and as an economic element and probably becoming very culturally significant. Oh, look, I've just pulled a thorn out. It's exactly what I was talking about. That isn't going to be difficult to replace. I can just pop that back in. I'll pop another little one in to wedge it in a moment. That was the first one that's gone wrong. That's pretty good going, isn't it? What was I saying? Oh, yes. So flax is a very, very important crop. Linen is becoming a fabric that most people are familiar with. And it's developing new ways of textile processing that have stayed with us pretty much into the modern day. Any of you who are spinners, weavers, textile artists have seen very, very similar tools in use to the modern day. These ones are just made with straight thorns rather than hooked wire bristles. I'm getting quite near the middle of this bundle now. And just to make the very middle easier, I've gone back to our bone ripple just to get into that very middle bit to stop it snagging. But I've only really been working at this whole bundle for, well, less than five minutes, I think. So a quick coarse comb through with a heavy duty hackle makes a lot of sense. Would do similar today with modern wire hackles. Start with the coarse one and then go on to the fine stuff. Right. That's my bundle that's come off with coarse hackling. Let's see if we can finish up with our thorn hackle. So starting at the ends nice and lightly. So far in the last five, ten minutes, I've had one thorn drop out and that pokes back in without any trouble at all. So I'm extremely pleased with this, considering this is the first time I've made one of these and I wasn't sure if I had the attachment methods correct. You can see that quite a lot of toe is building up on the hackle, but it comes off very, very easily. And this won't get wasted. This will come back through again. We're just at this moment after the very finest fibres. Okay, the centre section is always going to be trickier. Perhaps I should be working with a smaller bundle. But I just really wanted to destruction test this and see what happens. about the traffic in the background we do get a lot of tractors around here that's so nearly done I think for most purposes I would probably but I will do that let's try splitting a slightly smaller bundle off to finish up I think to get into those middle sections a big bundle may have been a little too ambitious that's the trick. It's what it needed, slightly smaller bundles. But that, that is a perfectly nice bit of line flax ready.
to be worked up into really high quality thread. Right, let's have a look. I can see, I can see one loose thorn, which I will just turn over and push back into place. I can see, yeah, that bundle needs tweaking. All right, one bundle out of 93 needs a little work at the end of that little experiment. I like this, I like this a lot. It may look like a pet hedgehog, it absolutely does what we want it to do. I'm very happy with the results of that. I've just weighed this. Our initial bundle was about 70 grams and we haven't lost a lot. That does look like a lot, but it's very airy and fluffed and most of that will comb back into some order. I didn't take huge amounts of care doing this because I just wanted to see what the tolerances were. But there is no doubt at all that this works brilliantly. Those are the thorns that are dropped out from that little hole there. They'll go back in. All I need to do is group them together, pop them back in, maybe add another tiny thorn just to wedge them. That's fine. Yeah, that is really not much fallout to get a bundle of flax into smooth, usable condition. And that's the little bit I did extra attention on. This is great. I like this tool. I really hope you've enjoyed this series on early textile tools. They've been part of my final dissertation for my Masters in Experimental Archaeology and I've had a lot of fun making them, researching them, more importantly sharing them with you all. Whatever you're doing, whatever you're making, have a lot of fun working on it. Bye for now.